Welcome to all of you for the biggest game in the history of AFC Rushton and Diamonds. It is the championship playoff final at the end of our 14th year in charge of Rushton and Diamonds. We started off in the Southern League. We could now take them to the Premier League and achieve that dream and even have time for a few seasons there before the release of FM23. But we've got to get past Portsmouth to do it. The sixth place team in the league who snuck in on the last day and are taking that good form and confidence into this game. But we, we have got the players to do this. Let's go. Yes, welcome to the biggest episode in the history of Dog Turds Into Diamonds. Even bigger than our FA Cup semi-final last season. We are playing Portsmouth in the playoff final for a place in the Premier League. And all the riches that that entails. It would be incredible. We will take a quick look at Portsmouth before we start. They have a caretaker manager. Stephen Schumacher. He has been caretaker manager this season. I don't know why the previous manager left, but you can see he's kind of a, uh, an above average coach, maybe. He looks all right. He doesn't look anything fantastic in coaching terms, but he has been doing a fantastic job. And surely if he wins this game, he becomes the permanent manager of Portsmouth, you would have to think. Manuel Gasparini is their captain, the goalkeeper, 33-year-old Italian. Again, he looks all right. He looks pretty good. He doesn't look anything next level, though. Ash Reed is vice captain. He is a left midfielder. Again, looks decent, looks all right. Doesn't look anything incredible. They have... Finish the season on decent form, of course, to sneak into the playoffs in that sixth place. Upsurping Reading and Leicester, who both looked much, much better over the course of the season. But Portsmouth came good when it mattered most. And you can see here, I mean, I'm saying they're the form team, but really it's only their last six games that they've actually shown any form, isn't it? They were really poor through March. They were average, you'd probably say, through April. They did beat us 3-1 away from home, though. Um, before that, they had a very good February, an average January, an average December. I mean, they're probably a bit like us. They actually haven't shown any fantastic form at any point through the season. So two very even teams, maybe. Let's just take a quick look at some of their other players. Hackford, Antoine Hackford is their striker. Um, again, he looks all right physically. It looks like he's got a bit of pace about him. A little, little bit off the ball. Good anticipation, good decisions. Could make him uh, a decent poacher. He can finish, he can dribble. But again, I mean, he's not exceptional. 17 goals this season in the league. Max Dean, only two goals this season for him, the 31-year-old. Um, his finishing is good. Again, a little bit of dribbling. Um, very much the same. He's quick. Good passing. Yeah, I mean, he'll be a threat. I remember the game that we lost. Chris Rice absolutely tore us apart. He's another really quick player, the winger. But after that, mentally and technically, doesn't look great shakes. Um, Reed on the left wing. We, uh, we looked at Ash Reed, didn't we? He's their vice captain. Um, in midfield, they've got Harry Johnson. Again, just looks like a sort of League One midfielder to me. He looks like a sort of solid bottom half of the championship League One midfielder. Paul Halliwell, um, very good first touch and uh, passing ability. Mentally solid, technically solid. But again, I'm not seeing a Salah Lalafi here. Alfie Del Fuenzo. Is that right? Delfoeneso. Delfoeneso. There you go. Um, decent attacking right, right back. 
uh, yeah, you have to say, he doesn't look bad. Again, maybe not anything exceptional, not Premier League quality, but doesn't look bad. Michael Shaw at left back looks average. There's no reason why we shouldn't be advancing our chances here. Mark Dunn at centre-back, very good at marking and tackling, but very poor header of the ball. Good jumping reach. Um, looks similar to some of the defenders that we've got. And Habib, Habib Kashi does look pretty good, the Iranian. Um, doesn't look bad, doesn't look bad. Maybe looks like he could possibly do a bit of a job at the bottom of the Premier League. Uh, Gasparini in goal we have looked at. So I don't think we should be fearing them, but they did play us off the park completely when we last played them in the league. Uh, but we've got to put that out of our minds now. Viljavi Sanisalo is going to be our goalkeeper today. The Finnish goalkeeper is the, the greatest goalie in our history. We've got a new first choice goalkeeper coming in next season. Can Viljami give us a, a huge final performance of the season today though. Igor Luiz at right back, the legend, our longest serving player, been with us since the league two days. Dylan Jones at left back, um, Apaya and Rodriguez, the centre backs, that great central partnership. Preets, do I start with Preets or do I bring Parkin in? He's still not fully fit. I think I'm going to stick with Preets and we've got Parkin on the bench. Preets will start in the midfield as the box-to-box -box midfielder with Weston Spence as a ball-winning midfielder. Um, I think changing Weston Spence to a ball-winning midfielder really has helped us just be a little bit more solid, have a little bit more control of our games. Anthony Johnson, who scored the equaliser at Bristol City that sent us to Wembley, he is on the right wing. Mavadidi is on the left wing. And I'm changing out Josh Stefan for Jose Santos in the number 10 role. And of course, Salah Lalafi, the championship's top scorer and current championship player of the month, is the striker. Savi and Ishmael Rodriguez are on the bench. Parkin and Stefan are the midfielders. Jack Evans and Guante are the wingers on the bench. Wante can play as the striker, the Argentinian. And Peter Finnan, the Fulham low knee, is the second striker on the bench there. So no place for Edwards, Marty, Bailey, Roland, Moreno. Moreno, again, another legend who's been with us. I can't remember if he was with us in League 2 or if he turned up in League 1. But he is one of our longest serving players, as is Eddie Little, who's out on loan right now. Brian Nolan leaving at the end of the season. Porter uh, really has hardly played and has not been championship level. Hogan leaving at the end of the season. Uh, Gomez, Juan Carlos Gomez, wanted by San Jose in the MLS. And uh, Luke Allen, a very, very good left winger. Uh, uh, sorry, a very good left back. Also not involved today and Darius don't say the Derby low knee also not involved let's get into this one more big performance from the boys would see us become a Premier League team and the turnaround with the we've said it so often during this season but with the influential players we lost uh, in the summer to rebuild this team and reach the playoff final I actually do feel like it's been a really great achievement. There were moments in the season where it looked like playoffs was a distant dream. And here we are at Wembley, a packed house, a big payday, but the chance to make all our dreams come true and get those hundred million pounds in TV rights for being a Premier League club. Right. What do we say here? So Ole Gunnar Solskjaer thinks we should be telling them that uh, the fans are expecting us to secure promotion. I'm, I'm not going with that. We will secure promotion to the Premier Division with a win here. I'm expecting nothing less. Uh, if we win here, we're promoted. Have no regrets and give it absolutely everything you've got. That's the one I'm going with. Ah, only Anthony Johnson reacts. <laughs> okay. I'm sure the rest of the team, when we get a little bit more personal here, there you go. Everybody's getting up for it in the end. Only Jose Santos not reacting. The uh, the Benfica low knee. Um, 
actually the low knee situation we've get we've confirmed Cedric Preets for next season we've concerned jo confirmed Jose Santos and we have also confirmed Peter Finham am I right in thinking I can only have three low knees in the squad if we get to the Premier League um I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm right, but I'm hoping I'm wrong, because if we do get there, we are going to need much better quality than that um, to uh, to really help strengthen the squad and give it a really good go in the Premier League. So I hope I'm wrong, but I think I'm right. But more than that, I hope we get there. I hope we are in the final uh, in the Premier League next season. I'm going to set, they're playing a 4-4-2, so I'm going to set our midfielders to mark their two midfielders because their 4-4-2 does kind of depend on people breaking lines. I might have to set the fullbacks to mark their wingers as well with the pace they've got and the problems they caused us when we last played. Um, I've got to take that into consideration, but that's the way I'm going to start for now. That's it. Enough talking. It's time to go. How hard have you found the recent fixture list? Um, let's have a look. Um, it's been hard, but that's football. We'll just keep working hard. There you go. Um, Hermes Rodriguez starts again. Uh, yeah, I think we can be all be excited about the way he's playing. There you go. What a boring press conference. So there you go. We are the masters of mediocrity. Lost one, lost one, drawn. And there, Portsmouth are on very, very good form in their last five games, aren't they? Only losing against third place Derby in the first leg of the playoffs. They might even be favourites for this. Uh, but we have got possession for the first highlight. Johnson, back to Louise. Thought he might look to get Johnson in down the wing. Apaya to Preet, Santos, Lalafi. Can he find Mavadidi? He can. And it's straight into Gasparini's arms. That was a great opportunity at the start of the game. Were some Wembley nerves getting to Mavadidi there. What a great opportunity. That would have been a fantastic start. Um, it's very even. We've got another highlight. And now, are they going down to 10 men? What an opportunity we've got here. Cashy sent off for Portsmouth. And, I mean, are we ever likely to get a better chance than this i'm going positive and i'm encouraging the players are we ever going to get a better chance than this do i play with more width now try and take advantage of the fact they have no wingers on the field mavadidi blast him on it looked like it was going for the top corner headed away for a corner the corner comes in and laffy heads i think that went over the bar what a great chance that was Straight into the next highlight. And Hackford is in. A long ball from the key. Oh no. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. It's come out of nowhere. A long ball from the goalkeeper. Rodriguez gets absolutely done. And what a finish this is from Hackford. Sinisolo, no chance. And we have got to now take control. I am going to start playing with a bit more width. We're going to overlap on both wings. We're going to play out from the back. And I'm going to play with more tempo. I'm going to try and run Portsmouth ragged here. Um, we're going to play out to the full backs as well. They should have lots of space. And I'm going to full out press. And do you know what? I'm actually going to change something as well. Um, I'm going to change back. They are going to play pretty narrow, I think. So uh, I'm going to defend narrow and try and send them out wide where they don't have any wingers. And let's just demand more of the players now. We have got to now step this up. We are never going to get a better opportunity than this. We are on top. Do I go attacking? I'm going to leave it for the moment. And they've got a free kick and it's put in. And it's, t I don't believe this. I mean, where is this coming from? Seriously. Where on earth is this coming from? I mean, that is an absolute mess. We're 2-0 down. And I'm going to berate the players. I'm going to tell the players as well to start being more expressive and to shoot on sight. I don't believe this. Two goals from Hackford. 
I said I wasn't worried about him. He's absolutely torn us apart. And it nearly goes to 3-0. And this has just been an absolute disaster. And I am thrashing arms here. And we have now, we have got to get a big performance out of these boys in the second half. We really have. Um, right, tactically, what do we do? I'm going 4-4-2. Jose Santos has not been great. I'm putting Peter Finnan on up front. And we're going to play with two strikers. Finnan has done well during his loan from uh, Fulham. We need him to step up now. Deep line forward on attack. I'm going very wide. And I'm going to ask them to play wide as well. I'm going to ask them to try and use that, use that width as much as they can. And we have now got to really step this up. We need an early goal at the start of the second half here. And the FM bug, where all your players start playing in a black uniform, has come up here at Wembley. Could it be a lucky black uniform? Or maybe we can be the unlucky black cats for Portsmouth here. As Hackford steals it off a pyre, an absolute disaster. And Sinisolo saves us. Oh my goodness. Come on, boys. Get rid of this corner. Head it away. And the first highlight ends with yet another chance for Portsmouth. And we really need to step this up. This is poor. Uh, I am going to play in transition. We're distributing to the fullbacks. Do you know what? I'm going to stick with it for now, but we might have to start going into the forwards and just try and get forward a little bit quicker. I'm going to see how it goes, but we've got a free kick. We need this. We absolutely need this. Come on, Salah Lalafi. Was that? It was a save from Gasparini. Again, I criticised Gasparini before the game, and he's playing a really good game here. As Hatford breaks, it's one on one at the back. Can we slow him down there? Oh, we've just been awful. It's another chance and it's blocked. Reed had a go there and it's still not away. Harry Johnson. And again, our own highlight has turned into an attacking highlight for the opposition. Um, what can we change here? Right, we're going direct. We're going quicker. There's really nothing else I can do here. Cross the ball early. And we are going to go into the target forward. Um, get stuck in. Push right up. That could be dangerous with the pace they've got in the team. But, I mean, we just haven't turned up, have we? We just have not turned up. This is awful. They have even had more shots on target than us. I, I really don't know what to say. I was convinced we could do it, and when we went to 10 men against, uh, or 11 against 10, I really thought it was going to be our day. And we've been played off the park by 10 men. Eagle Louise, oh no. What a mistake from Eagle Louise. It's all over. It is all over. Mistake after mistake and our Wembley day out has turned into an absolute nightmare. Oh man. What a pitiful performance. Oh, let's get Preets off. We'll get Callum Parkin in. See if he can uh, come on as an advanced playmaker and give us something a little bit different. And... Anthony Johnson has been really poor. Let's get Jack Evans in on the right wing. There's nothing else I can do. We we just need an absolutely ridiculous last 10 minutes if we're going to if we're going to do this, but there's been absolutely no sign that that is going to happen. I'm going to berate the players. We've had more shots, more far more possession, but it's a much lower xG. And even if, it, if this goes in, it still doesn't help us. Mavadidi loses it. Parking gets hold of one there. 
Can we do something? No, we can't. It's going to be another attack for Portsmouth, is it? No. Finnan, can he come up with something? He drives it in. Evans, and again, there's nothing doing. We've just been pathetic. We've been absolutely pathetic, and it is turning into a highlight for Portsmouth by the end. Oh, football manager, I hate you. I absolutely hate you. Someone please explain this to me. Finnan is in. Finnan gets a consolation. We've got two minutes to score another two goals. Lalafi heads that down. Evans with the through ball. Finnan finishes, but this is all over. Oh, man. Tight offside. No, it was not. Not a hint of it. Demand more. One last highlight. There's not going to be time for two goals. Can we at least get one more back, maybe? The whistle is going to go at any point, surely. The ten men have dominated us, and they're in again. Cottrell. He was offside. What a poor performance. Come on, at least give us one more goal to finish off. Make it look vaguely respectable. No, a 3-1 defeat against 10 men. Absolutely pathetic. It's all over. Um, there's only one thing for it. Throw the water bottle. There you go. That's the end of season 14 on Dog Turns Into Diamonds. I started off with enthusiasm in my voice. I'm ending with anger. It's all over. Season 15 will be our fourth season in the championship. I'm going to leave it there. We will talk all about this and the plans for next season in the next episode, which will be the end of season review. We have now got a summer to try and push ourselves onto the next level, build on this. There's nothing else to say apart from if you have enjoyed it, if you want to see if we can do this before FM23 comes out, drop a like on the video, comment if you want, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next one.